Chapter 1, Ayat of the Holy Quran concerning Tabligh. First of all, I want to mention a few verses of the Quran stressing Tabligh. From these verses, the readers can easily see how important Allah considers the preaching of Islam. I've come across as many as 60 verses on this particular subject, and Allah knows how many more verses could be found by another keen observer. I wrote here a few of them for the benefit of every true believer. What's that verse in Surah 5 that's not here? Um... وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ مِمَّنْ And whose words can be better than his who calls toward God and performs good deeds and says, I am of those who submit. God. And that's Surah 41. This chapter is not listing the numbers of the verses, but um, note, certain commentators have written that whoever invites people to Allah through any means deserves the honor mentioned in the above verse. For instance, the Anbiya, you know, the exemplar prophets, call people to Allah by means of miracles and supernatural actions. The scholars invite them by preaching and arguments. Muslim warriors, Mujahids, uh, Mujahideen, call them by means of the sword. You know, the, the war isn't fought to, uh, you know, to force conversions. And the Mu'addins call them by means of the Adhan. You know, the call to uh, something, the thing heard, the call to prayer. In short, whoever invites people to good deeds deserves this reward, whether he calls them to the formal practices of Islam or to the other spiritual improvements, like the mystics who stress the purification of the heart and the realization of Allah's attributes. Regarding the conclusion of the verse quoted above, some commentators say that such a person should also be proud of the honor bestowed on him by Allah, a being a Muslim, and that he should express this with pride, while well, being pleased with it and certain about it. Um, some other commentators interpret that he should be, not be proud of being a preacher, but should consider himself an ordinary Muslim. Because unlike other faiths, really the, the practicing of the faith and the spreading of the faith is up to every individual. And by practicing, I mean, you know, even, you know, you don't wait till, oh, we don't have... The community leaders, we're not going to do our, you know, prayers or even our Friday service, or our weekly service or something. Um, now, um, something from Surah 51. <laughs> Preach to them, for preaching proves very beneficial for the believers. Note. Commentators have written that by preaching is meant advising the believers the verses of the Holy Quran, for these would guide them to the right path. But such preaching can be useful for the disbelievers also, for thereby they may become believers. Well, my posture is still not right, but also for thereby they may become believers. The day preaching is not performed regularly and properly. Generally, the object of preachers is to show off their ability and oratory to the listeners, whereas the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, whoever learns the art of oratory in order to attract the people toward himself, then his prayers and ibadat worship, whether obligatory or optional, will not be accepted them on the day of Qiyamah. So, if you find some, uh, if you find a better place to find these teachings, you know, somebody who's smoother with the uh, other languages or something. As long as it's not for mere entertainment, go. Yeah, go to that channel. Um,
you may find something here of benefit to you, but it's about the benefit to you. It's not about my personality. Something from Surah 21. Command your family to observe the contact prayers, and also perform these regularly yourself. We do not ask you for sustenance, but we'll give you sustenance, and the ultimate success is for the God-fearing. Says Sir Twain, right? Numerous traditions say that whenever anybody complained of poverty to the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he recited this verse and advised him to perform his ritual prayers regularly, as, though pointing to the fact that regularity in prayers will lead to plentiful positions. I'm trying not to itch during all these, but um, these verses. Oh no! Now I notice more. Just, the, this verse stretches that it is beneficial to do a thing yourself before giving instructions to others, because this is a more effective and successful method of preaching. That is why all the unbia themselves did what they preached to their followers. Thus it became examples to the followers, who would not then think that the teachings of their religion are too difficult to practice. You know, news bringer, but also who awakens the inner fruit is the bee. You know, brings it out. Bring it out is the is the yah at the end. Lord Orber. Allah has promised enough for those who perform the prayers regularly, so that they should never feel that prayer can interfere with the earning of their livelihood, whether through trade, service, etc. Therefore, it is stated as a rule that the ultimate success and salvation will be attained by the God-fearing only. And from Surah 31. O oh, son, perform thy prayers regularly, and command people do good deeds, and prevent them from forbidden things, and bear patiently whatever befalls you. Undoubtedly, this demands courage. Note, in this verse, several important things for Muslim have been mentioned, which can be a means for salvation, but we have neglected these very badly. Not to speak of asking people to do good deeds. We have neglected even Salah, which is a basic principle of Islam. In fact, the most important after Iman. There are so many people who do not perform their prayers at all. But even those who do hardly perform it, with all its requirements, such as Salah with Jama'ah, it is the poor only perform their prayers with Jama'ah in the mosque. While the rich feel it below their honor to go to the mosque. Ah, my complaint is only to Allah. And see, we got that Urdu poem. I, though some of these are Farsi, but I think that's Urdu. O oh, careless person, what is a disgrace to you? Is a matter of pride for me. And we all have our test. All this talk about privilege and all this stuff. If we do our best with what we have, perhaps the merit, the reward involved in the deeds will far outweigh the very simple thing, even more than the otherwise would. It's like, isn't the, whether Muhammad and Jesus both had their incidences where somebody came with this wee, wee, wee little bit of charity and they were pointing out how much greater what this person did was than all these people who brought the piles of money.
and people are more likely to fail the tests of ease and free time and wealth and stuff. Although some people, that's where they do their best. From Surah 3. Walta cum in cum martin yaruna lankai. I'll start again. Walta cum in cum martin yaruna lankai. Wayamuruna belmarufe. And there has to be a group of people among you who call toward the good and bid the fair and forbid the unfair. And it is these who are successful. Note that this verse has clearly commanded the Muslimin. To prepare a group or party who had preached Islam throughout the world, but we see that the present day Muslimin had totally neglected this commandment. On the other hand, non Muslimin are preaching their religion day and night, and last I heard in this country, we have 33 organizations that are not dedicated to spreading good and truth. What they're dedicated to is opposing Islam and religious freedom in America for the Muslim mean. Now, why are they doing this? Probably puts a threat to their blood and soil movements or their money through unlawful sources or something like that. But um, we need to be active. Of course, we can really say, do you condemn this, that, or the other? It's like, I read the Quran. That answers your question. Um... For instance, parties of Christian missionaries have been specially assigned to propagate their religion in the whole world. Similarly, other communities are trying their best to preach their own religions. And by religion in Arabic, you go beyond the word religion. Deen is the system of judgment. So, verses like that are referring to ideologies without mythologies, too. The question is... Is there such an organization among the Muslimin? Answer, if not in the negative, can be in the positive, cannot be in the positive either. If any individual or any party among the present day Muslimin take up the preaching of Islam, unreasonable objections are raised against them instead of giving them help and cooperation, whereas it is the duty of every true Muslim to help those who preach Islam and to remove shortcomings where necessary. These people who neither do anything themselves to preach Islam, nor help those who have devoted their lives to the sacred cause. Thus, the result is that even the sincere and unselfish preachers get disappointed and give up their efforts in, in this regard. <laughs> You are the best of peoples, well, uh, Muslims, uh, well, the best of communities. Kuntum, um. Muslims this is how it starts, but we don't see that word. You're the best of peoples who have been selected for the guidance of mankind. You enjoin them to do good deeds and prevent them from forbidden things. And you have firm faith in God. From Surah 3. Note, that the Muslimin are the best of all Ummas. It has been clearly stated by certain sayings of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there are even some verses of the Quran that confirm this. Even the above mentioned verse 
gives the honor of the best nation on us, provided we preach Islam, command people to do good, and prevent them from evil. Remember this messenger of me the messenger's talk that I've done from time to time. But Muslim refers to people of all communities that follow the prophets. In the Talmud, Muslim is, you know, sort of the equivalent of the Arabic Muslim. Same basic meaning. There are some specifics that are different, but um, you find totally different language terms. It's all about surrender to God. Um, but this nation is a nation that will preserve its scripture and pass on enough of the other teachings to help and uh, to help with that. Um, I mean, the inspired teachings, how the prophet was inspired. The commentators have written that in this verse, commanding good and prevention of evil, as we mentioned before, faith, even whereas faith, iman, is the root of all Islamic beliefs and actions. The reason is that faith has been a common factor among the earlier, I don't remember the plural for uh, for community, but the early uh, ummas of the world. But the special thing that has particularly distinguished the Muslimin is the directive for commanding the people to do good and to prevent them from evil. So, this is the real basis for the superior, the superiority of the Muslimin. Whenever they fulfilled it, and since in Islam good actions are of little value without faith, it is therefore clearly mentioned at the end of the verse. In fact, the real object in this verse is to stress the importance of persuading people to do good deeds, and this is the distinguishing feature of the Muslim Ummah. It is not sufficient to command good and to forbid evil only now and then, but this practice should continue at all times and on all occasions regularly. References to the task of preaching the truth are found in earlier religions. Well, again, this is a misnomer, but... Um, you know, the earlier communities. But, you know, because each prophet had his community. Whether they accepted him or not, this is what this was called, um, whether it was local or a different time or, you know. But the distinguishing merit of the Muslim Ummah lies in taking it up as a regular task. This is not an occasional job, but a permanent one. From Surah 4. La qayra fi min najwaam elamanamara Sadaqatin al Ma'arufin al Weslahin Bainanase Wamanya Fal Lalikam Tinga Mardatala Efa Salfa Nuti Helandrana Sima the talk of an assembly of common folk. There is no good at all, except those who command people to give charity, or instruct them to do good things, or make peace between people. And whoever does this, only to please God, soon he will receive a great reward from God. Note, in this verse, God has promised a great reward for those who preach truth, and how great and honorable can be the reward that has been called great by God. In this connection, the exemplar prophet has said, A man's words may be broken. Uh, a man's words may be a burden, you know, a sin for him, except that he has spoken for giving instructions for good deeds and preventing others from forbidden things, or from remembering God. And another hadith, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Shall I tell you a virtue better than optional salah, fasting and charity? His sahaba said, You must tell us that virtue. O Ras Well, O Apostle of God, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Make peace between people, for hate and mutual fight, upper good deeds, just as a razor removes the hair. There are many more verses of Al-Quran and the sayings of 
the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam instruct us to make peace between people. What we mean to stress here is to make peace between people is also another form of instructing them to do good and preventing them from evil. To introduce peace and cooperation in society should therefore be given due importance. And let us remember how in Islam there is not the... Um, I want to see if I can find the verse I was mentioning. Um, there is not... You know, they just say stuff. Uh, you know, you, you encourage good and forbid evil, but... Well, 67 is what I'm going to bring up. I think that's what I was talking about. Um, yeah, most of Islamic law is never enforced by an Islamic state. 567. Ya you Allah, yeah. Ya you are Rasul Baling, Manzilalika Mirabika Walam Tafal, Fama Balagha Risalatahu. Wallahu ya asimuka minana se nalahala ya del kamal kafirin. O messenger, proclaim the message which has been sent to thee from thy Lord. If thou didst not, thou wouldst not have fulfilled and proclaimed his mission, and Allah will defend thee from men you know, humans, you know, the gender-neutral thing, but for Allah guideth not those who reject faith. And see the yud in front? They're not taking in. Surely, the, uh, surely of God, they're not taking in his guidance. And so that's a better way to say that it's not that God doesn't guide everybody. He leaves out the guidance for everybody more than what they need. And the Quran never says otherwise, but it's an awkward rearrangement of the verbiage and some other things. Um, some people have related this verse here. Oh, no, 777, okay. Um... He worked to solidify this community, to give them the guidance so that they wouldn't split apart and stuff. It wasn't that Ali still wasn't chosen by the people to be a caliph later. And certainly there's no holiday of the 18th of the 12th month where you celebrate, because even the Shia narrations point out that there are only two festivities. The initial of the 10th month the 10th through the 13th of the 12th month. Those are the holidays. We don't need to make holidays of everybody, everything we can put a date to that happened in Muhammad's life. Oh, we, it turns out he visited a graveyard once on the 15th of Shaban. So therefore, oh, that must be a holiday. It's like, no, that's just a detail of the narration. And people with their births and their death days and all that other stuff, um... We need to focus on the basic message and not turn it into something that people can't follow.